today we're going to upgrade the storage in my 2022 model Razor Blade 17. Unlike some other laptop providers, Razer does not let you build your own and pick all the specs. You have to choose from various pre-configured options. And even though I bought the most expensive Mac Daddy fully specced out model, the largest option for storage for all of Razer's laptops is one terabyte. And that's where this guy comes in. This is the Western Digital WD Black SN850X Gen 4 NVMe with two terabytes of storage. This is the highest end card with up to 7,300 megabytes per second read speeds and up to 6,350 megabytes per second write speeds. And that is blazing fast. My Razer Blade has the 12th Gen i9-12900H processor, the 17.3 inch 4K 144Hz display, NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti graphics, and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. And while it can be upgraded to four terabytes of storage, it only comes equipped with a single one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD. I should also clarify, I bought this Razer Blade with my own money, and I bought this drive with my own money. This Razer Blade is my daily driver. I use it as a desktop replacement. This is my computer. I game on here, I edit videos on here. I do all my computing needs from this device. That's part of why I'm upgrading. For me, one terabyte simply is not enough space. As soon as I move my files from my camera onto here, it starts to get full very quickly. I've previously always used Samsung drives and I've been very happy with them. I'm generally a fan of Samsung products, but at the time that I purchased this, this was the latest and greatest. So I figured why not give it a shot. And while it is true the Razer Blade can hold up to four terabytes, it already has a one terabyte drive and it only has two slots. So it seems a little wasteful slash not really worth it to replace both the drives. So what I'm going to do is make this two terabyte Western Digital Drive my main C drive and move the existing one terabyte drive over to the secondary slot. All right, so now let's crack this bad boy open. I did open this up already in my unboxing video just to see what's going on in the hood. It is very easy to open. Unlike other laptops, I previously upgraded the RAM in my Dell XPS 9710 and it was a horrendous experience. I never want to open that device again. With the Razer, you just need to open a handful of screws. I use this iFixit kit and I believe it was this T5 I think that's a Torx bit there. Uh, and to be safe, you should be wearing some kind of wrist strap like this. So first, make sure the device is powered off. Obviously. All right, so once you get it powered off, you want to flip it upside down. So you can see these little bits just go in here. They're very tiny, but they come out just fine. The good thing about the side fix is that these little trays in here, so you can just put them in there. And I try to put them sort of in order. I mean, they are definitely the same size screw, and I'm sure you can mix and match them, but I just kind of like to keep them in the same order that I took them out. So I kind of put them in here in a certain method. Hopefully this way I won't lose any of them. And hopefully I don't scratch up my device. Another good thing about the iFixit kit is they're magnetic, so you don't, hopefully, won't lose your screws. All right, I'm taking my wrist strap off. You should wear a wrist strap, I'm not. So once you get the screws taken out, the lid will pop off fairly easily. It does stick a little bit back here. I'm not sure why, I know there's some sort of trick to it, and I'm probably just doing it wrong, but I can, I can never get it to slide out just right. It always feels like a little catch. You know, you just wanna be careful not to bend it. Yeah, I just don't know what that is that sticks on there like that. The first thing you wanna do once you get the base plate off is disconnect the battery, which is this little guy here. Some laptops will have a heat sink for their drives. The Razer Blade does not. However, it does come with thermal pads on the back here, here and here that will line up with the corresponding SSDs. It also comes with a screw for the drive right here. So you don't need to buy one of those either, so. And also for a thin laptop like this, you do not want to buy an SSD with the heat sink pre-installed like the Samsung 980 Pro. It'll be too big. You won't be able to put the base plate back on. It's just, it's not a lot of room to work with these thin laptops and these low profile SSD slots. Now to get this to work the way I want it to, you can't just move the drives over. I can't just swap them over right away. I mean, you could, but you have to reinstall a bunch of stuff and it'd be more hassle than I want it to be. So what we're gonna do is follow a method I saw watching a video from Mash IT. Hi. This is David at Mash IT. Uh, it's a pretty good idea, so I'm just gonna take his idea and claim it for my own. And just to be clear, I am very smart. Mash IT is a real piece of crap. Don't watch his videos, don't subscribe to his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash 
Mash.T Tech. And definitely do not subscribe to his second channel, Mash Extra. Fun fact, I have a second channel. It's called Stuff Mike Bot. It's a better name for a channel than Mash.T's second channel, Mash Extra. And I have way more subs than him. It's embarrassing how bad I am crushing him over in second channel land. All right slight future update here when i initially recorded that i had like three more subscribers than him on my second channel and now he is beating me on his second channel so it doesn't make that much sense hey look we started channels around the same time at least i have more views than him so pretend my joke instead of saying i had more subscribers was saying i had more views so that makes more sense all right back to the video so anyhow don't subscribe to Mash IT or Mash Extra, but do subscribe to 5 After 12 and Stuff Mike Bot. So back to this technique that I invented and definitely did not steal from youtube.com slash Mash IT Tech. So if you want to look at this in 850X, in the box is just a little bit of paperwork, the drive itself, and of course it has all the chips on one side, which is good because with the laptop like this, you don't want chips on one side. So we're gonna take our SN58X, install it in the second SSD slot in the Razer Blade. Then we will boot the Razer Blade back up, clone the C drive to the SN850X, and then turn the Razer Blade back off, crack it open. We'll swap the drives, reboot it, and wipe the Samsung one terabyte that was formerly in the C drive. So it's a lot of steps at once. First step, we're going to install this SN850X into the second SSD slot. As you can see, Razer already has a screw. Let me take this screw out. And there is a piece of foam here. This has to come off. You won't be able to install the drive with that on there. So to actually install the drive, you can see there's a little indent there. So it only goes in one way. And so it's gonna be the words on the top. It should slot in right there. It clicks in and then you push it down. It should line up perfectly. Then we'll get our screw back here. Screw this back on. Then we're gonna hook our battery back up, of course. And then we're gonna put the base plate back on. Now, I'm not gonna screw it in right now because we're gonna take the base plate right back off in a minute. So let's turn them on. So once we get it all booted back up, then we wanna launch the ESUS or ESUS, I don't know what it is. ESUS to do backup software. I also bought and paid for the software myself. It was not something I got for free. You can use other software, but this is what Mash IT used and it looks pretty clean and simple. So that's what I'm gonna use. So let's launch the software itself. So once you're in the software, we click on tools here, with a little arrow pointing to it for you. And then you wanna pick system clone. And then your source is gonna say Windows 11. So it's gonna pick your source C drive for you automatically, right? It has that one selected. So now you need to pick your target and it has a bunch of drives in here but so you can see it, the source is already chose up here windows 11 the target it's going to be the one down here that has two terabytes or 1.8 terabytes the other ones here all the other little drives here i don't know what they are but they don't have any storage on them so, so we're going to click this one now you can see it target is disk one and we're going to hit next so you want to drop this down to edit the disk layout and then when we click here you want to drag this as far as it'll go. That way we have the whole drive. And now we'll hit proceed. So it took 20 minutes and six seconds. And then I have an option to hit finish here. And then we're essentially done. So now we need to shut it back down, flip it back over in the whole shaman. So let me turn it off. All right, so now that we have our drive cloned, you wanna put your wrist strap back on. We'll take the base plate off, of course. I didn't put the screws in, so we can just take it right off. Still can't quite get this little sneaky guy back here. Don't know what it is. I'm just pulling forward. That's probably not the right thing to do. That's how I get it off. All right, we're gonna disconnect our battery again. I don't really think that's the battery, but we'll see. Now what we need to do is flip flop our drives, moving our two terabyte WD Black SN850X over here to where the Samsung is and the Samsung over to here. And you can tell that like I said, it, even though it only has one drive, it has thermal tape for both of them. And then I guess one for the RAM as well because the chips on their upside here and this side the chips are down. So there's probably a pad on the other side. Anyhow, so let's take this one out first. This guy should pop right up and just slides right out. And then there's a little yellow sticker that says power off before operation over here. That makes sense. So we'll do the same thing. Just slide it right out. And again, we'll slide it back in here and then press it down. It should fit just fine. We'll leave that yellow tape there. All right, now we'll move this one over here. Again, we gotta line up the little indentation there into the correct slot area. There's so many slots who won't know where to begin. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, we should line up perfectly. Screw them back in. Yes, we'll make sure this one still is good. Looks good. Make sure you connect this battery back up. Then we're gonna put our back plate back on. All right, and this time I am gonna screw it back on because I do think I did it correctly. 
All right, now we wanna boot it back up. Once we get booted back up, one of the first things to check for is to make sure it does not explode. I don't wanna get too technical here, but explosions are bad. It seems pretty good. Twenty-four hours later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been a wild ride in the past 24 hours over here. So that part you just saw, I was recording last night, pretty late. And when it came back up, things just didn't look quite right to me. But turns out it was right. I was just weird, but I was checking things out. So right now we have, if you look at disk management, we can see this zero is the two terabyte Western Digital that I put in with the EFI partition and this full gig. But this, you know, 1.8 gigs or whatever leftovers here, right? I don't have this healthy recovery partition from the original. This, this one is the original C drive of my SSD that came with it. And it was driving me bonkers trying to figure out why this doesn't come over. I still don't know how to get it over there, but I don't think you need it for a couple of reasons. One, it's just there in case you break stuff, right? So don't break stuff oh, no. is obviously the first option Two, razor does have their own recovery image they have video here about how to get their recovery image and if you go to their razor online services assuming you have registered your product you should be able to get to the recovery image here and you can see your device there currently of course is razor blade 17. click on it you can verify your information and once you submit it, it gives you an option to download it or you can email, a link will be sent to your email. So it's already done that, but I can click it here. Well, for now, I'm gonna save this on my C drive. I'll just mark it as a razor blade recovery disc and then I shall save it. And it's a large file, right? 17 gigs. So again, I've tried this numerous ways. I went and flipped it back around and I took out this one, zero, whatever, right? You can do two things here, right? So I use the system clone option, which is the clean one that just gives you just this 100 meg and then the full drive itself. Or you could have used just the clone and not system clone and it pulls over all these little pieces here. But even when you do that, it makes a thousand megabyte partition, but not the recovery partition there. And as far as I can tell, this 18 gigs here is just garbage. And I thought maybe I messed up something, but then I found this screenshot from back in September it is now November and I only had 934 gigs there as you can tell only 934 gigs here so there's just apparently 18 gigs of garbage in this razor blade and I don't know why so by cloning it I am getting a cleaner disc I believe not positive but I believe so I took this disc completely out and just had this zero and it worked just fine but now we need to get rid of all this right and of course you need to make sure that if you look at your c drive make sure windows is on the c drive here and not the d drive so the c drive and if you look at this pc the c drive is the 1.8 terabytes and this d drive is the 934 which is the old samsung all right so now we need to get rid of this garbage and start a new disk and since there's partitions in there we can't just right click and format it i mean i could delete the volume and i can't delete this one i can delete this one but i can't delete all of them so what we need to do now is go to command prompt and again you only gotta do this if you want to reuse your existing drive so again launch command prompt running as an administrator and of course i guess i should always warn you that you could definitely break stuff if you don't know what you're doing so be careful of course computers are complicated i don't know if you all know this but computers are complicated devices they're not just gaming machines right so we go into this part and we can go to list disk and we can see this zero and this one. So this zero is the bigger one. This one is the smaller one. And the smaller one is the one I want to get rid of. Right. So we go to select Warn you that you could definitely this stuff. zero. And now we can list the partitions. And you can see this. Oh, I mean, the sounds like the wrong one. <laughs> so you got to be careful. I almost messed up. So we go to select disk one. And now list the partitions. So now we can see I have five drives here, right? Delete partition. All right. So now if I go back to disk management, you can see that 18 is now unallocated. So let's go back to list part. So we're on disk one still. And so we have the 100, I don't know if that 16 is. So we'll do select part two. And now we go to delete part. You gotta hit override. You can see now we're down to 
just these little pieces here. So once again, we'll go back to list my partition. So we have three, four, and five. And so once again, we're going to select part three, and now we're gonna go delete part override, and it deleted it. And now we will list part, so we have the primary recovery. And then let's just go ahead and select part four delete part four and so now you can see on my original drive so this is my actual working drive now that's the two terabyte one and this is the original samsung so now i have all this unallocated with just the recovery partition here and again i don't believe we need that so let's go ahead and go to list part and we just have five so we'll go to select part five and we will do delete part override and now here we are with a bunch of unallocated full terabyte here and here's my EFI and here's my everything running that I'm currently on this computer that I want. So now we're done with this. Exit here, exit here. All right, so here's where you have to be if you just cloned it and put in a blank draft. Since I'm reusing the one I had to do all that deleting, but now here we are with a bunch of unallocated drafts. So now we need to create a new simple volume. We want it maxed out, of course. Uh, we're gonna choose a drive letter. I'm gonna pick G. G is for, I'm a gangster. G is for, Grip. G is for G, 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 net. No, no, I'm just kidding. Obviously, G is for go subscribe to 512 and stuff Mike bot, but don't subscribe to Mash IT or Mash Extra. I'm going to name it G for games, which is what mostly I'll be storing there. So I know the one terabyte should be fine for my use case. So again, make sure that's the right size, right drive we want, and finish. And we should have a basic healthy partition of one terabyte there. So there we go. So now we have our G drive and then here we are on my Blade 17 C drive so I can see all my stuff. So we're done at this point really. We can close this out. If you just want to double check, you can go to Windows settings just to make sure everything's nice and clean and you go to system and then down here to about. If you look at our product key, activation windows is activated. I didn't have to reactivate it or anything like that. It was just from cloning it. It makes everything work just fine. All my stuff works. I don't have any qualms. Uh, this drive is downloading and now we can show it in folder. Works just fine. You can see it's in my documents. There's a razor blade recovery disc, right? So if I need to recover, I can use that. And I'm using Dropbox, so it's gonna upload to Dropbox for me. But yeah, all that should be fine. So of course, before I even set this up, I was curious as to what kind of speeds and what we were gonna get. So I did run Crystal Disk Mark on the C drive, the one terabyte C drive, and I had a 5,000 read speed and 3,200 write speed, much slower than my original testing. And then I had the temperatures running. We had 49 degrees, basically 51 degrees is what it maxed out at over here. So 61 degrees, I don't know. So nothing major, right? But we can retest those now. I am doing a screen recording and other stuff, so maybe a little higher, but let's go ahead and just do our first test. And you can see I can just launch my applications. Everything shows up fun. And let's do H for info. And I can go ahead and like see all this stuff. I didn't reset this up. This is all working just the way I had it before. Same thing with even the monitor stayed in the same sort of squished up guy I had it in, right? And you can see the WD black and the Samsung there showing both my drives. My sticky notes, I have those remain just fine. I'll change it, of course, to say after upgrade. All right, and then we have hardware info. We'll do sensors only. So this is hardware monitor from CPU ID. And then here we have hardware info. So there's the WD black. And then there is the Samsung. We're gonna test the C drive first, which is the two terabyte. So that's the WD black. And we have the WD black here as well. So you can see values, there's a minimum max. And here we have the minimum maximum and the average. I will reset min maximum and I will clear min maximum here. So let's go ahead and run that test. And again, I'm doing a lot of recording. I'm recording this and I've been rebooting it multiple times. So I may not get the best numbers on this first test, but I'll do another test cleanly without all this stuff recording at the same time. All right, so there's the end of the C drive. You can see it got up to 53 degrees max and 57 degrees on this one, right? So it's things will vary when you get to here. So not great scores, but again, I have a lot of stuff going on right now. So I got a lot going on. I'm recording audio, I'm recording the screen, all that. So I don't know if that interferes. Again, I'll test them without all the shenanigans here. Let's go to the G drive, which was my original Samsung drive. Then we'll go back and clear these. Right now I'm really just testing the temperatures, I guess. So, and let's test all on the G drive, the one terabyte original Samsung drive. All right, there we are with the 5,065 
read speed and 4367 write speed. Again, these numbers think they're wonky. I'm more looking at the temperatures here at 62 degrees. So it did get higher, I think, assuming this is right. 52 up 70. Yeah, so this is definitely getting higher. I had the wrong one, stupid. So yeah, the Samsung is testing higher temperatures than the WD Black, at least in this initial test. I'll do some more tests without the screen recording and all this other stuff going on. I'm keeping this draft, of course, but I'm gonna use the laptop for a couple days just to make sure it doesn't explode again. Make sure it doesn't, you know, fail on me or anything like that, right? Because I don't want to recommend it if it's gonna be problematic. And as long as I can use it for a couple days, no issues, then it's probably gonna be fine, I think. All right, here we are. You can see it's December 3rd. So I've had this running for a while. This is the same razor blade that I swapped things out on. The C drive is now my WD black SN850X and the G drive is the original installed Samsung drive. I'm getting a little bit of a spoiler alert here, but I've run tests multiple times and what I've determined is that the initial Samsung drive that was installed was pretty great. So let me run it here. And as I do have a lot of stuff running, I'm recording my screen. I have the microphone software running and all these things running. So I don't know how much that should impact it, but either way, let's take a look at another test. And this is the C drive, which again is the WD black that I cloned and then moved to the C drive position. I didn't really have to move it, I don't think, but you can see, I think I get lower scores when all this stuff is running. So you can see 6282 for the read and the write is 2851. So very good read speeds, not great write speeds. I mean, they're not bad by any means, but they're not that impressive for what this card is. But again, I got better scores. I don't have all this stuff running, but let's go ahead and now yeah, let's start it on the G drive. And the G drive is the originally stalled Samsung drive. All right, so looking here, it looks like the average is about the same. I cleared these. I don't remember what it was over here. 58 degrees, I think maybe the black runs a little cooler, but the Samsung getting way better write speeds. So again, all this is with all this stuff running at once. So I did this original test on the C drive before I installed everything and I was getting lower speeds, but again, I had everything running. Basically what I'm saying is none of these scores make any sense because this was the original test on the Samsung drive and I was getting 5,000 here and 3,200. And now in the G drive position, you know, I'm getting much faster speeds. So right before starting this video, I did two tests on the C drive, my WD Black SN850. And you can see I'm getting almost a 7,000 read speed, which is very good, but only a 2918 write speed, which is okay-ish. The G drive is the Samsung drive. And again, I'm getting still close to 7,000. Getting 6,600 was pretty good. And then 4922 write speeds. And then right before I start this video, I did a reboot and I made sure to close everything out over here. You know, I'm not running hardly anything here. This came back on. Now that stuff was running whenever I ran these tests here. So the C drive after an install and after the reboot and the clean reboot, again, just shy of 7,000, but still just hitting about that 3,000 mark, which is odd for the write speeds on the WD Black. And on the G drive, the original Samsung, we got just about 5,000 write speeds and 6,600 read speeds. So essentially what we've learned here, for one, I'm glad I did the install. I use a lot of space, so I'm glad to have it. You can tell, you know, I still have plenty of free space on both drives. I would clearly fill up that one terabyte drive just fine. So I need two terabytes at least, ideally three terabytes, maybe even four terabytes for me to be, because I, you know, I do a lot of video work and some of these files are very large. And of course games are large, so I'm glad to have the storage. I don't regret doing it at all. And we've also learned, I believe, is that Samsung puts a very good drive. You know, again, this G drive here is the initial Samsung drive that was in the Razer Blade. So the drive that Razer shipped this with is a high quality drive. And again, this is a high dollar device, so you would hope so, but yeah, that drive, it's very good. I've always used Samsung products, Samsung drives as well. I've used the 980 Pro and the 970 before. Actually, Mesh IT talked me into using this one, but I probably should have gone with Samsung. I mean, it's not a bad score by any means, but if I had done the Samsung 990 Pro, which is their latest and greatest at the time of this video, I'm pretty sure I could have, you know, I had to use that Eza software to do the cloning. Samsung has their own software, I think would have done that, but I would have had to have a Samsung drive. So I didn't try it this time around, but I'm pretty sure it only works with Samsung. I'm guesstimating here, but essentially the WD Black is fine, but I'll probably stick to Samsung drives going forward. I've had no problems. I've rebooted multiple times. I've done lots of work on this device. This is my daily driver. This is how I run everything. And 
I had no qualms. I'm glad I did the upgrade. It works great. But looking at benchmark testing, the Samsung drive scoring basically better than my fancy new WD Black drive. So the next device that I get and put drives in, they're probably going to be all Samsung drives. And I guess also uh, I should clarify, I don't know that it makes a difference that there's already stuff on these. Like if I ran it with a completely empty drive, if I'd get better speeds or not, I just don't know the answer to that. So, but either way, the drive's fine. I would say if you find it for a good price, get it. But personally, again, this is only a one-time anecdotal test. I guess, but personally, I'm going to stick to Samsung. I like Samsung devices, and the next drive I get will just be a Samsung. So I'm going to be building a Razer desktop pretty soon. I'm probably going to, I mean, I have this WD drive already, so I'll probably use it as a secondary drive, but I'm going to put a Samsung drive in the main drive. So, all right. Thanks for checking me out. If you made it this far in the video, how about uh, subscribing? And just let me know you got this far. Put a comment that says Mash IT sucks, or Tony sucks, or 5 x 12 is better than Mash IT. Those are all good things, so let me know. All right. Thanks for checking me out.